Hello, welcome to another edition of the Pace Report. I'm Brian Pace reporting live here at Jenny's Supper Club here in Harlem, New York. This week here in New York City, the jazz community came out and paid their respects to legendary baritone saxophonist Pepper Adams. And what better way to kick off this week's festivities was with the kickoff party for Motema Records' five CD box set commemorating the compositions and life of Pepper Adams. In addition to that, writer and biographer Gary Carner just released Joy Road, which is a biography of the life times and composer of Pepper Adams. Both of them were friends for 15 years and right before Pepper's death he decided that he was going to spend the next 28 years getting this book out to expose and also reflect on the life of Pepper. All week long Motema Records has put on some very special presentations commemorating the life of Pepper Adams. And the kickoff was at the Jazz Gallery featuring jazz luminaries Don Friedman, Curtis Fuller, and Lewis Haynes. So sit back, relax, and enjoy my interviews, live performances, as well as reflections of Pepper Adams' compositions live here at Jenny's Supper Club here in Harlem, New York, as well as the Jazz Gallery here in New York City. esteemed poet Barry Wallenstein who is here and um, and here I am with the book finally finished I want to thank Montana Music for Jana Herzen for, for giving me a kick in the pants to finally finish this book uh, I probably wouldn't have had it done if it wasn't for you and this wonderful wonderful record deal this whole thing we're doing um, so I'm going to keep my comments really brief uh, we did this five record set Gary Smolian is on one, of course, and uh, Frank Vasili is here, he's on another. And in another recording, we feature the lyrics of Barry Wallenstein with Alexis Cole. Um, yeah. I, yeah, <laughs> that's right. Um, I was very honored to have Dan Morgenstern write the foreword to my book, which is an annotated discography of Pepper's work. And I'm just going to turn it over to Dan eventually, but Mary Ann will introduce him properly. Thank you, Carrie, and thank you all for coming. Um, 
When Jana Hertzen approached me in late spring to become involved with this project on Pepper Adams, uh, <clears throat> I don't think I had any idea what I was getting into, actually. Um, the, the, the goal was to produce a week of special concerts in New York City. And I don't have to tell you musicians who are here, it was pretty late in the game to try to find venues. But we were absolutely able to do so, and um, thanks to a lot of hard work on so many people that are here tonight that I won't mention. But uh, just on a personal note, um, I first heard about Pepper Adams actually from the great bassist Rufus Reed who had been part of the St. Jones Mel Lewis Orchestra, which of course Pepper was part of for well over a decade, perhaps 12 years. And um, we're going to be celebrating many of his years with the Village Vanguard Jazz Orchestra tonight, right after this event. So if you have reservations, or if you don't, you know, I would recommend you get over there, uh, because Gary Somalian will be sitting in, and Jerry Dodgen, and the great George Moranis tonight. But, um, as this project uh, evolved, it took on a life of its own. And I think the reason for that was the spirit of Pepper himself. I didn't know too much about Pepper, as I said. I, I was part of the cool school in Los Angeles. Of course, I was a follower of that other baritone saxophonist who was his contemporary who had fabulous hair. And um, <laughs> so, as I got to know these 43 compositions, which was a, <clears throat> an interesting project in itself, uh, over the five records and a sampler kind of deal we had, um, I found out many things musically. One, of course, that he was indeed the most influential baritone saxophone of the modern jazz era. And two of his great disciples are here tonight, Gary Simoleon and Frank Basili, who you will hear later. I also found out, to my great interest, that he was quite a Renaissance man. I think one of the critics called him, um, well, said he devoured everything, from art history to classical music, to philosophy, to religion. And I think if you study his song titles, you're going to see some of that erudite nature of his coming out. He was truly a Renaissance man.
he said this, to me he was uh, a work of art. And uh, one of the few people that mastered that instrument. And I know about mastering instruments because I tried. But coming up with Pepper on the Detroit scene, he uh, inspired me, taught me to reach and try to get more out of the trombone without just sliding. He used to make jokes of it. And there were other great trombone players around Detroit. Frank Rosalind on, to name one. Certainly there were more. But for me, uh, sometimes you get complacent and you think, uh, that was good enough. That's never good. And when you become the, uh, the man about town and everybody thinks that you are the guy, there'll always somebody be there to remind you, just ask Muhammad Ali, there's always somebody that can get you. But Pepper inspired me to write, with his selections of uh, material to play that on trombone. And he wouldn't release me. He was <laughs> determined to make me play it by playing it over and over again. And uh, of course, that took me in another direction. And it, uh, I sort of released the path of J.J. Johnson, who was his master, and found the direction because I started, started to listen to saxophonist, saxophonist. <laughs> but, uh, and that's due to Pepper Evans, who I will uh, respect and honor. Well, Pepper, uh, I used to see him in Detroit, but we really didn't know each other during that time my younger years. But I had the opportunity to join Horace Silver and come to New York in 1956. And then I got to know Pepper pretty well here. And I would say he was a quiet giant. We had the opportunity to uh, co-lead a group. I was maybe in the late 70s or 80s and we appeared in the bottom line. Also in Fat Tuesdays. And another place in Manhattan in the daytime, which I can't recall where it was. And we did some traveling together in Europe. But he was a, a great person to speak to. And I really enjoyed his, the way his uh, interpretation and the way he played on the baritone saxophone. I saw, um, I saw him just before he passed away in Washington, D.C. And he wasn't feeling too well at that point. So after we had, I was playing a little job there, and after the job was over, we had a nice conversation and time to talk. I'm glad I had that experience of recording with him, because when you record with someone, it's always there. So uh, straight ahead, Pepper, uh, enjoy yourself. I know people are enjoying you wherever you are. Hello, D. <laughs>
Tonight is a very, very special performance. I mean, we have the past, present, and the future, baritone sax, in remembrance of Pepper. Tell me about tonight's compositions. Well, these tunes were all written by Pepper Adams. You know, Pepper Adams had a real individualistic compositional style, very influenced by Billy Strayhorn and Duke Ellington, and but with a unique harmonic language and rhythmic language that's really particular to his writing. His tunes are very challenging and really fun to play. So it's uh, always a pleasure and an honor to, uh, to play his music. All week we've been paying tribute to Pepper Adams, the musician, the composer, as well as Muse to the Music. He was one of your heroes and one of your mentors and also he was also a teacher. Tell me about what he means to you. Well, for me, Pepper Adams is uh, the most important post-bop baritone saxophone player that was, uh, you know, ever on the scene. I mean, he, he's, uh, he really defined uh, post-bebop language on, on the instrument. Uh, different, you know, Jerry Mulligan was great and a uh, total genius, not to take anything away from him, but just a, a different way of playing, a uh, way that's a little more close to my heart in terms of just, you know, coming out of more of, of bird and uh, the more of a kind of a bebop language. Um, and I mean, I think about Pepper every day and I carry him, uh, like he wrote the tune, I carry your heart. Well, I carry him in my heart every day. Ronnie, tell me the first time you were exposed to Pepper Adams' music. Oh, that had to be back when I was buying records uh, when I was like a teenager, still in high school, and uh, I was buying Blue Note records with Donald Byrd and Pepper Adams, Jackie McLean, and that whole sound was so great. Uh, so I was very drawn to the Blue Note sound of, uh, and but there were other baritone players, but guys my age said you gotta you know get that Pepper Adams edge man you know so uh, I was really into Pepper for a long time. What was it about his playing and his style that was so different from his contemporaries out during the 50s and 60s? Well I think he was coming out of like Charlie Parker you know and a lot of guys like uh, you know Coltrane and Dexter Gordon and it was kind of like a, a more of a post-bop kind of uh, approach to the, uh, the harmonics, the melodics and the rhythm, you know, and it was more advanced than uh, say like Jerry Mulligan's playing and uh, you know, a whole lot of other people you know, so uh, Pepper Adams was my idol for quite a while. What does Pepper Adams mean to you and mean to jazz music? Well, Pepper, you know, he uh, established, uh, uh, he broke ground, you know, on the baritone sax. I even saw him on the Grammys once, you know, and uh, but they don't have that anymore, you know. Hardly ever do you see a jazz band playing at the Grammys, and uh, Pepper was, I think, the first one to ever play baritone sax at the Grammys. And uh, he was doing a comical thing too, you know. So, yeah, I remember that.
tonight you played a very, very special tribute to Pepper Adams versus the kickoff at the Jazz Gallery on Monday. And now tonight it seems like it's the past, present, and the future of baritone saxophone. What is your take on tonight's assessment of the music? Uh, my take is uh, that we're just having a great time paying tribute to one of our favorites, Pepper Adams, with some new arrangements of his compositions, and uh, we're having a great time. Tell me about playing with Ronnie Cuber, because Ronnie really is one of the, the last of the musicians that really kind of studied his technique and his flow. Well, Ronnie Cuber, both of these guys, I got to say, are two of my biggest musical heroes ever. So it's really a, it's everything. It's an honor, it's a pleasure to be playing with these guys. Um, I studied with both of these guys when I first moved to town, so uh, it's, it's, it's a really great experience being able to share the stage with these guys. What does Pepper Adams' music mean now in 2012 for jazz music? Well, uh, I mean, I don't know if I could give a definite... I, mean, I think the, the meaning is going to be different for, for every person. For me, it's just a very... Uh, it, uh, it, it, it grabs something about me, or it grabs something in me, and uh, it, it just uh, it, it strikes a chord inside me. I don't know what else to say. This has been a hell of a week for you, and it has, man. you have all of these dynamic events starting with the kickoff at the Jazz Gallery, and tonight we have the Three Berries. Tell me about the significance of the Three Berries and what this is meaning for baritone sax in the past, present, and the future in celebrating our good friend Pepper Adams. Yeah, that's a great question, because Ronnie Cuber is the first baritone saxophonist to try to attempt to master Pepper Adams' vocabulary, so he's the past. Smolian is the next generation, and Basile is the following generation. So what we're seeing is past, present, and future. You nailed it. It's exactly right. It's perfect. This week has also been a very, very spectacular week for you also. You introduced the world to your book, Joy Road, the biography of Pepper Adams. Tell me about your relationship and friendship with him. With Pepper Adams? Yes, oh, well, I, I met him in 1984. He wanted to be interviewed at length for a book that I wanted to do on him. And he was such a brilliant, articulate guy that uh, we were going to work together on an autobiography, but when he was diagnosed with cancer the f about nine months later, it derailed the project. So here I am, 28 years later, doing this incredible, incredible week and a tour all throughout North America to celebrate his life. Um, gosh, if he was alive, uh, who knows where this book would be or what we would be doing. But uh, this is the first of two books that I'm doing on him, actually. And I'm also doing a screenplay. Tonight you had very different variations of different type of music styles to Pepper's music. Right. What were you thinking about when you were putting these particular compositions together? Often you want to try to put together a set that has a certain amount of variety. 
So uh, I was thinking about that. I mean, what I was given were all ballads, and they're all beautiful in their way. But uh, in order to have contrast, I wanted to create some environments where the feel was different, where there was more of an up-tempo feeling, and maybe a sense of humor sometimes. His ballads are so lyrical, deeply lyrical and deeply beautiful, and yet they have a lot of flexibility. They have, they're like, as I said, they're kind of like Mozart. They have this mysterious other message underneath that something else is going on. So I wanted to try to draw that out. And in terms of practicality, in this kind of a set situation at Birdland, you know, it's good to have you know, something a little faster, then something a little slower, then something a little faster. A lot of variety. And then, of course, David's piece is completely different from the others. So I thought we had a nice set that way. Tell me about the first time you met Pepper Adams. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was on Thad Jones and Mel Lewis band. I was, I came to New York in 65, and shortly after, I became uh, Joe's, Joe Farrell's kind of sub-protege kind of thing. And the band had already started, so Joe would send me in when he couldn't do it. He was a very busy guy. And then Eddie Daniels was in the band. He said, why don't you do it for me? So I was doing it like more than either of those two guys. Anyway, I would, when I played Eddie's chair, I sat next to Pepper. And uh, that's when I first met him. And then, you, you know, a couple of years later, Duke Pearson put together a big band and uh, asked me to join them. And uh, Pepper was a regular in that band. So we played together a lot. And we seemed to have uh, communicate together quite well. He, I think he gave me too much credit. He thought I was smarter than I was, and he, he's a very smart guy. <laughs> so anyway, that's I've known him for many years, and I, I was uh, with him shortly before he, he passed at a, a jazz party in uh, Tucson, Arizona, which was kind of remarkable how he was so ill, could hardly walk when he picked up the horn, man. It was magic. Oh, all that energy just, I don't know where he got it, but it just, especially playing a baritone, it's not, a, you know, it still takes a lot of air. So that's, in a nutshell, that's a general, you know, acquaintance with Pepper. 
Tonight you played a lot of his compositions and you've played with him like you said off and on over the years up until he passed. What were so unique about his compositions and what was it that you brought to life this evening? Well to be honest I never played his compositions and he he actually gave me uh, a bunch of his lead sheets and stuff you know and and I I never I never got around to really doing them justice they, so when this situation arose, all of a sudden I found myself, well, here I am, let me see. How can I play this in the spirit of Pepper Adams, but not, you know, but making it, the music my own. I always, when I play, I, if I play a tune, I want the tune to be like my composition. So that's what I tried to do to a certain extent, especially in the ballad, because the ballad gives you, you know, time to tonally, and like, when I played his ballad, I kept on thinking of Don Bias for some reason. And Pepper had a great line. He said, uh, if you steal from one or two guys, it's plagiarism. <laughs> if you steal from a bunch of guys, it's called research. And Pepper did a lot of research. So uh, every so often you play something and you say, well, I think he heard this in this melody. I think he heard this kind of sound. And I, I tried to do it justice in that in that in that manner What does Pepper Adams mean to you? Pepper Adams is, you know, means a, a unique spirit, you know, uh, intelligence, humor. We're lacking uh, the jazz music today. <laughs> There's very little humor. You know, most of the young guys are not funny, and they don't, they take themselves quite seriously. Not that you shouldn't, but. There's a lacking, the humor is lacking. Humor and passion and romance is lacking. Pepper embodied all those and uh, amazing technical ability. I, I remember doing a recording with him, with a, I think it was Maynard's band, Tom McIntosh wrote a chart, and Pepper had two bars in a ballad. He played more notes in those two bars than I could play in like a whole chorus. And it was, it was kind of, he was an amaz amazing virtu virtuoso. And, uh, Tremendous drive, uh, unique in so many ways, but a, but a joyful spirit in music, one of the giants.
Jana, congratulations for one, the release of this digital online box set to Joy Road, as well as the festivities all week. Motema, allowing you and Gary, have really kind of put together the legacy of Pepper Adams this week. Tell me about the concept of these CDs online. Well, the, the uh, idea for putting this project out was really, I mean, first off, it's thanks to Gary Carner because he produced all these amazing recordings, and we put it together as a box set, digital box set, you know, it's a modern world, and so we've put together a digital box set, it has five volumes to it, and uh, we have Jeremy Kahn uh, leading two of the volumes, Frank Basile, the second tenor sax, I mean, uh, baritone saxophone player, is doing one volume, and then also Kevin Bales. And then there's one volume that is a special bonus volume that has Alexis Cole, and she has with Barry Wallenstein's lyrics. So Alexis is actually singing lyrics to Pepper Adams for the first time. So really it's to honor uh, really an incredible genius of jazz who didn't really get his due before. So now I think this, between what Gary's written in his book called uh, Pepper Adams' Joy Road and what he's produced in these CDs and we've helped him to promote, I think we've gotten the word out about this compositional genius, you know? Another thing that you've also done too, you have two hard CDs that people can go to, uh, either iTunes or they can go to any record store to buy also as well, right? Yes, we do. One is called the Pepper Adams Joy Road Sampler, and it has samples from each of the five volumes that you can get in the box set. And that's on sale for a promotional price. It's only $9.99 whether you buy it as a download or in the stores, so I highly recommend people get that. We selected a nice example from each one of the five volumes, and then we also put Alexis Cole's record out as a CD because uh, it was first off a premiere, it never had been done before, and very special, special recording. She did a show at Smoke uh, this week that was just phenomenal. She's, it's new, you know, new jazz standards for the canon that we've brought in with this, with Gary's work and Barry Wallenstein's lyrics. That'll do it again for another edition of the Pace Report. I'm Brian Pace reporting live here at Jenny's here in Harlem, New York. I'd like to personally thank everybody that was involved with this week's festivities in commemorating the life of Pepper Adams. I'm talking about Marianne Topper, Gary Connor, the writer and producer of the book as well as the CDs, Motema Records, Jana Herzen, the president of Motema Records, as well as all the musicians from Ronnie Cuber, Curtis Fuller, Lewis Haynes, Gary Smullyan, you name it, everybody that took part of this week's festivities. As always, please visit my website, www.thepaceyreport.com, for my weekly column as well as my past segments. Until next time, remember if it's in the groove, it'll make you move. Till next time, peace.